Editor in Chief of Supply Chain Management Review, which is part of Peerless Media Supply Chain Group. And I'll be your host for today's session. Thank you for joining us today. We have a great discussion planned for you today with some extremely knowledgeable guests who are going to help us better understand Yard and Dock software. Today's session, titled Demystifying Yard and Dock Implementation, is being presented by C3 Solutions. All attendees are in mute mode. Today's panel is being moderated by Tim Dooner, host of FreightWave's What the Truck podcast. Dooner, I think everyone is anxious to get started, so please take it away. Brian, thank you so much for that introduction, and what a great time to be having this conversation. Everybody cares so much about AI, automation, how can we make things quicker and more efficient, and nobody needs that more than yards and docks, so we've put together an amazing panel today with the help of C3. I want to introduce them all to you. Let's start with the smoothest voice in the room. It's Neil. Neil, good morning. Good morning, Dana. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Introduce yourself to this great audience today. Hi, everybody. My name is Neil McAvoy, VP of Customer Experience at C3. I've been in the industry for about 15 years. Um, and yeah, really looking forward to the podcast. And next to you, we've got Mark. Mark, how are you doing today? Doing great, Tim. And uh, let everyone know a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I've uh, I've been working at uh, C3. I'm a C3 CTO now. I've been working here for about 22 years now. Um, worked through uh, several different roles from IT to implementation to development. So that's uh, that's my career path for you. We've got a lot of experience in this room. Frederick, are you going to add to that? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Fred. Uh, I. Uh, I'm the C3 Yard Implementation Team uh, Manager at C3 Solution. I uh, joined the business in twin, uh, 2017. Uh, and prior to that, I was a logistics consultant for uh, one of the major Canadian grocery retailers. So, well, we're glad to, to have you here. And Greg, this would be an empty room without you. <laughs> well, thanks, Dooner. <laughs> yeah, Gr Greg Braun. Um, I'm actually the uh, one of the co-founders and the Chief Revenue Officer at C3 Solutions. And I was just... I was reading the bio that was done up for me and it says here I have 35 years experience in the logistics industry. So yeah, I guess so. It's, it's gone very quickly though. I don't feel that old, but uh, that's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the senior representative here on the call today. All right, well, now that we've taken the room's temperature and we, we know that we've got a, a lot of experience in here, it's, it's a good time to talk because, you know, when you talk about chains, there's a lot of fear in supply chain. Everyone wants to disrupt the supply chain, but nobody wants their supply chain disrupted. And a funny little chatbot came out maybe about six months ago. Everyone started talking about it, ChatGPT. And, you know, that was talking about chat and text, but it got this conversation around AI and automation to the forefront in every industry again. So let's see how it applies here, though. Neil, why would we automate yards? Well, it's a good question, uh, Duna, but um, having worked in this area for a number of years in uh, sort of managerial operational roles, there are so many moving parts in any yard operation, whether you've got a few trucks, a small warehouse or a parking lot, you know, the, the inbound and outbound and all the movements are very, very hard to, to, to manage constantly with a manual system. And even with a system that doesn't have a lot of functionality, for example, which, you know, they, they exist. So... Whenever you have people, you have uh, vehicles, trucks, trailers, uh, yard dogs, shunters, whatever you call them around the world, there is a lot of possibility for waste. There's a lot of possibility for things to go wrong. And there are lots of, I guess, nuances that are hard to fathom, even if you have a control tower that's looking 24-7 at every single op op you know, uh, operational detail. So a, a system that's good for a YMS or a dock scheduling uh, tool is, is going to really capture every single event uh, at a finite level. So from uh, you know a, a booking being made from a supplier going to um, their customer, could be a retailer, wholesaler, uh, grocery store, uh, kind of operational distribution center. So when that booking is made, you wanna know all the details about it. You wanna make sure that that information flows through for when that vehicle arrives, that you know the same details are there or there are exceptions to manage. And, you know, from the point at which that vehicle arrives on site, it's it, all systems go. Everything needs to be efficient, optimal, all data must be captured. So without a robust and you know, digital system of a, a sort of high level, you're always going to allow the possibility and sometimes possibilities, multiples of things going wrong, things falling through the cracks, 
process is not being followed. You know, every, a lot of the companies that I've worked for or now work with as a supplier of, uh, you know, an IT solution such as C3, um, you know, they often have a huge amount of people looking after their yards. Now, that's not just people doing the task. That's also people checking to make sure the people are doing the task correctly. OK, um, so there's huge amounts of waste. There's huge amounts of uncertainty and risk and you know, automating a yard and, and dock operation, I think, is key if you want to take your business to a level where you have consistency, you have fluidity of your inbound, outbound and, and yard um, movements, and also just making sure that you know, you know, the, the, the data and the information, statistics, etc., to understand, are you doing a good job? Can you do better? Are there rooms for improvements? Yeah, you know, all these things that I guess with a paper-based system or maybe a, a sort of mid-level low system with, with, with lack of data, you just you just don't get. Yeah, those are, those are good points, uh, Neil, and, and this is Fred. Uh, I can jump in here. Uh, I've been working on deploying uh, yard management systems for uh, over 10 years now, uh, both as a, first of all, as a client and of C3 Solutions, uh, and then uh, inside uh, the company. And what we see uh, in yards is, people are confused as to what is information exactly. What are we talking about? Are we going? Are we talking about going paperless? Or uh, are we talking about driverless uh, trucks that are moving traders around? Uh, so, so it's a, a question that has um, uh, so, many, uh, so many aspects to it. Uh, clients are uh, yards in general. We, we work with uh, some of the most uh, advanced uh, yards uh, in the world operationally, so leading manufacturers, uh, leading uh, grocery uh, retailers, uh, and so on. And most of them, when we uh, show up, do not have uh, a good understanding of what their processes are uh, on site. Uh, so the first step uh, to automating yards and, and dock operations is understanding exactly what, uh, what automation means for those clients that are uh, essentially working on on paper now, uh, as, as Neil was saying, and uh, how do you get to a point where you can remove tasks, remove manual tasks in your yard and give it to a system? So how do you uh, automate uh, empty trader assignments for your outbound routes in time? Uh, how do you uh, assign the right trader movement task to the right trader and bring the trader to the right door? So those are extremely complex uh, questions. Um, and 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 they're they're tough problems to solve. So Mark uh, here is 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 leading our our product team, and it, and it, every day he has challenges. Is he 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 faces big challenges in trying to answer those questions. Right, we're really sandwiched between the warehouse management system and the transport management system. So we have to uh, sort of answer all uh, many questions at, at the same time. I have a question for you, Neil. Is is a lack of labor driving this need at all? Uh, good point. Uh, it's a good question. Um, I think there there's definitely a trend uh, since the pandemic, and there was even signs of it before, that finding manual labor for you know to work in warehouses, even to drive trucks and and vehicles around yards, was becoming increasingly more difficult, and therefore trying to make sure you can automate as much uh, you know by automate i mean you know allow systems to run your processes for you in the background you're still going to need some people we don't have robots and and and, and driverless uh, trucks yet but uh, i think you'll always have an element of human uh, intervention there but if you can streamline if you can take out waste if you can reduce the amount of uh, need for uh, i guess supervision or or just you know got wasteful operations therefore you, you need less people but yeah definitely this has come at a really important time because with you know as an industry we are struggling to uh, to get people in to do these jobs you know that, that is not often the most glamorous to work weekends to work uh, overnight uh, the truck drivers as you know Duna the, tr the life of a truck driver is in, you know an incredibly tough one it's long a lot of time on the road out away from families so you know, if we can do something to help our yard uh, operations through automation, we can definitely give our clients and, and, and people out there that are interested in, in software such as this an element of, you know, you don't have to be looking at what your, your volumes are next year and thinking, geez, I'm going to have to really find labor uh, from, from, you know, from a small or a medium sized pool, whereas before it was an abundant pool. 
in my, you know, I, I worked in parcel post for a, for a, uh, well over a decade, and we got we got to a point where we'd we'd have to go to the new, next town and offer um, transportation for uh, you know warehouse staff to come over during our peak periods. So you can't continue to do that uh, reasonably, and, and, and you know uh, it's, it, it, it's not an efficient way of doing things. It's not even good for your staff to to have to to, to work in that way. So yeah, where we can optimize, where we can make our uh, operations more streamlined and efficient where we can take out the excess movements and the excess waste from your your inbound outbound and and, and you know on on and off door sort of operations then that's gonna you know that that just gives you a whole host of you know uh benefits but also eases that pressure in in, in you know the the tough labor market yeah you, you know you mentioned people people make decisions they make decisions within an organization what role does internal the internal organization play in yard and dock efficiency? How much is this your own fault? Um, yeah, I, th I think that uh, we, as a business gets bigger, I mean, the smaller businesses, the, the, you know, it's, it's tough enough because, you know, let's like say you got three three people watching your your site overnight, one on the on the gate, one in the in the warehouse, one over in the control room then if you lose one of your staff for illness or vacation or somebody leaves that's 33 percent of your workforce when you're a much bigger organization then obviously losing one or two people or not having the labor is, is less of a problem percentage wise but as the businesses grows they often grow in silos so you have the transport department who are different from the warehouse operations who are different from um you know the 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 hub team or the uh, the operational team you'll have a yard management guy you, you know so as you get bigger these departments within departments start to to scale up and communication between these departments is, is tough so having one version of what's going on at any given time is essential so you need to have a system in place and we believe the best is a, a digital uh, cutting edge uh, technology driven uh, system for your yard and dock operations and you know having something that everybody has uh, access to everybody uses uh, you know uh, as the core of their operational uh, framework um, is essential because otherwise you have lots of different sort of maverick uh, departments doing their own thing and they don't really know what's going on in each of their own uh, areas each of the other areas and therefore it, it ends up like spaghetti, right? It's just a mess. Things are going. Oh, where did you put that trailer? Well, I took it off for a for a, um for a safety check. Well, I needed that to go out. We were going to do the safety check tomorrow. It's just it's it can be chaos, and I've and I've seen that chaos firsthand. So internally, Duna, it's essential that you know that harmony needs to 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 to, to be restored. And we would do that by going in, finding out exactly how each of those departments work, how they interact with each other, and what's the most optimal or efficient way of having that flow through of you know, vehicles arriving, unloaded, loaded, whatever uh, the connotations are, but making sure that end to end process is as slick uh, as possible, and that everybody has visibility and the, the ability to, to, to work with the exceptions, uh, as well as the rules. Makes a lot of sense. Now, Mark, this is uh, this is kind of a buzzy term, and you're a tech guy. Let's see. Uh, let's look out your window for a minute here. What does it mean in terms of yards and docks? What does digital transformation mean when we're talking about that? Yeah, that's a that's a broad question. But <clears throat> I mean, for for docks and yards, uh, I mean, the, the, the digital transformation really means to you know move away from these manual labor intensive tasks and. Like Neil was mentioning, these these isolated data silos into a more uh, a more streamlined and data driven environment. So it's it's like replacing your clipboards and walkie talkies with these real time dashboards and automated scheduling, uh, automated scheduling and, and like predictive functionalities, right? So I mean, how does this translate really into real terms, like in real operational terms? So so digitizing your uh, doing the digital transformation of your yard and dock operations can mean streamlining your operations, right? You're going to be able to coordinate the flow of trucks, the flow of cargo. Uh, you're going to be able to allocate the personnel that you need to your various dock operations and whatnot. These these days of your clipboards and manual data entry into spreadsheets is going to be replaced with you know, touchscreen interfaces and barcode scanners. It's going to make your operation run a lot more, more smoothly and significant, significantly reduce the chances of, uh, of, of input errors by your, by your users, right? It's also going to give you an enhanced visibility. It's going to allow you to have some real-time visibility into your yard and your dock operations. You're not going to have to 
find your supervisor to understand where a shipment is, what's the status of a particular uh, of a particular item, where a particular trailer is located in the yard. You're going to have all this information uh, available for you uh, directly inside that digital platform uh, that's going to give you visibility on your yard, your dog, your operations, what status uh, uh, every item in your uh, in your in your daily scenario is. It's also going to give you some benefits of, of, of predictive capabilities, right? You're going to have some advanced visibility and advanced uh, analytics into your operations. That's going to help you forecast your bottlenecks before they actually happen. It's going to let you take some proactive measures and ensures that our, your operations are not going to be hampered by the, the lack of visibility into these operations. That's the data-driven decision-making uh, first, I guess, aspect of it. Does it all start with software? Is software what leads this innovation? Yeah, software is definitely the backbone of innovation in today's logistics industry, right? It's not just about doing the same thing you've always done, but faster. It's about it's about doing things you never thought were possible to be done, like you know, automating tasks that were previously manual will not, not only save you time, but also reduce those errors, right? Real-time data is going to allow you to make proactive decisions, going to lead to a more agile operation. That's where these, these new technologies like real-time tracking and AI can really come into play. And, and really innovation, innovative features, sorry, should, should not only solve today's challenges, but they should also prepare you for tomorrow's hurdles. Okay, I have a question though. So I've been tasked before with things like picking a CRM for an organization, and that's just a that's just a data warehouse of of sales calls and I would freak out and Google and look everywhere for the right information on which one to go with because you don't want to pick the wrong software and there can be a lot of confusion in this space. How do you go about picking the right software and making sure you don't waste a lot of money and set your organization way back? Yeah, well, I mean, often what we see, you know, we see organizations that focus on sort of the obvious factors, right? The, the cost of the solution or, or the basic features or, or perhaps maybe you know, the ease of use of the, the, the the platform you're going to be purchasing and and these are definitely important don't get me wrong they're probably some of the ones you definitely need to have on your uh, on your radar but there's a lot of factors that are sometimes overlooked but that can really make a significant difference in the long term right you can think of items like the um, the, the compatibility within your own ecosystem right your your yard management system or your doc scheduling is not going to operate in a vacuum. It's going to have to work seamlessly with every other software platform you have, like your WMS, your TMS, or an ERP system. These are just the the reality of a of, of a of a solution like this. The last thing you want is to create an additional data silo by entering a new solution into your operation that can't communicate properly. So you have to make sure that you check for you know robust APIs and and maybe even ask the vendor about their previous integration projects that they've completed. Another aspect you want to make sure also is, is, is to choose a solution that's future proof, right? Um, your technology and operational needs are going to change over time. And you have to make sure that you pick a software that doesn't, it's not going to become obsolete in a few years and that should evolve with your needs as a business and, and, and your needs as a technological company. So you have to have a vendor that's committed to, you know, having regular updates that has a roadmap that aligns with uh, your own business needs and even with the future industry trends, right? Not just your own uh, personal desires as an organization of where you want to go, but understanding that the, the, the trends of the industry are, are, are where the supply chain um, um, industry is going as a whole. So you have to ensure that your investment is going to remain robust and relevant uh, for several years down the road. And I guess other aspects like ensuring that the vendor offers proper support and training, right? The implementation of a system doesn't end once the software is up and running. Really, that's just the, the beginning and the ongoing support and training that you're gonna receive from your from your vendor is essential for, for maximizing the value of the investment you put in initially. So you have to look with for vendors that offer you know, good training programs, some solid documentation, some customer support, uh, uh, a give and take in terms of, of, of being able to exchange with the, uh, with the uh, the development team to, to you know, propose new features, propose enhancements and stuff like that. Also, one, one big aspect, you know, you have to definitely consider is the, the especially in today's uh, world, is the cybersecurity aspect of it. You know, mm -hmm. the, often these solutions are cloud-based solutions. If you're going to go with an on-premise solution, sure, cybersecurity is going to be important, but maybe not as much as uh, if your data is, is residing inside a, a third-party uh, vendor, right? 
So the more connected your systems are, the more you use these, these cloud-based solutions, the more, more vulnerable you become to these, these cyber threats. And it's going to be critical that you understand, okay, what, what are these vendors' you know, security protocols? What, what compliance certifications do they have? What type of data backup solutions do they have? Um, you have to make sure that you protect your investment uh, from, from, from you know, being hindered by a possible uh, cyber attack of some sort. I hear all that. Greg, did that all make sense to you? When you when you think in the context of software and innovation, what's the first thing that sticks out to you? Software and innovation. Well, I yeah. mean, ultimately, I mean, software is there to, especially in the case of, of, of yard management software, it, it plays a role, right? And and um, a, and we believe it's a, pl a, a critical role because if you, you look at it and, and, you know, the supply chain is a great metaphor, um, we we believe, I mean, the term itself, because we believe there's a missing link, and that link is the yard. Um, because we know, I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. Every one of the companies that we deal with, they have uh, an, ex usually they'll have an excellent warehouse management system. They'll have an incredible ERP system, an extremely innovative transport management system. But unfortunately, there's that little gap, which is the yard. And no, and and I know Neil's mentioned it. Um, and I think everyone's talked about it. How you've got all these very sophisticated pieces of software, and now you fall into the yard, and it's it's walkie talkies and clipboards. So um, the the so so in that sense, you know, clearly software and innovation plays a role. But how are we? You know, the the real function we're playing here is we're we're you know, in addition to giving those efficiencies, we're providing that glue so that these. The, you know, all of these different, these disparate systems can 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 talk and, and we gain the efficiencies that, because all these systems I mentioned, they all kind of touch the yard, but they don't treat it in the way that we know has to be, you know, it has to be treated. So I think that's very important. I mean, we can't get, you know, ahead of ourselves and just talk about innovation and so forth. There's a real function to this all. And, and that's what we see, especially a guy like Fred, he sees this all the time uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You set this up really, really well, Greg, because I want to talk about that next. This can sound great. We can know we need automation. We've considered the software. But what about does it align, right? What are some of the implementation hurdles? Can I actually bring this into my house? Fred, talk to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. On the on the previous plant as well, uh, point as well to, to build on what Greg was saying is the software implementation the first thing it does, it, it, it generates conversations. So conversations that you don't typically have in an operational uh, context where you're trying to survive, uh, you're, you're, you're trying to be as efficient as possible. But when you get a team of uh, your, your subject matter experts, your project managers, your IT, IT department, uh, all in line and with your leadership, all in line on uh, trying to get a, uh, a software configured properly and then implemented properly, it really generates conversations uh, that uh, allows the team to understand uh, multiple parts uh, of, the, of this problem. So uh, understanding why the uh, warehouse manager uh, has certain requirements, why uh, the gatehouse is, is struggling so much. Uh, so that's, uh, that's really helpful. And, and it, most of the time, uh, we come up with uh, innovative uh, solutions. When we work with our client's team, we, uh, we redesign business processes that have been uh, stagnant for a couple of years um, but then we get pushed back right uh, software implementation is uh, is not easy uh, so we have a dedicated implementation team uh, here that specializes in uh, preparing clients uh, for those implementations so transitioning from the uh, the client team that has been working on uh, the, the the vision the requirements and so on and that transition to the project team that will be delivering the product Unfortunately, uh, quite systematically, uh, we are clients. At least one person says that it's going to be impossible, and I, I hear it all the time. We've tried before. We cannot do it. Our operations are so co are too complex. They are too unique. We have those unique challenges. Drivers are not compliant. Um, uh, they've been doing whatever they wanted for a while. Uh, our gatehouse is not structured enough, and so on and so forth. But we all we always make it. Uh, right, it's it's yard management. We're not sending a a a, a shuttle in space. Uh, what we're doing is implementing 
a yard management system throughout um, uh, relatively complex uh, yards. But the first, the first hurdle really is understanding what those business processes are. So mapping uh, all the uh, the roles of all the users throughout the operation. So the the 10, 15 stakeholders that you have. Some some of them need data. Some of them need um, uh, need to input uh, specific. Uh, they, they need to input specific information uh, for the process to be uh, to be efficient. Uh, some users just want empty traders, right? Your outbound manager, they they, they want empty traders in order to ship their uh, their duties uh, at the right time. So yeah, the first pushback that we have is really that transition from uh, the executive team uh, to uh, the operations. And yard and duck management, it's a, uh, as uh, Neil, Greg, and Mark were saying, it's it's a critical transition point between transport and warehousing. So uh, from experience, it yard management becomes a critical software that uh, enables uh, better processes. If not in place or implemented properly, so operations are at risk of uh, process gap, uh, bottlenecks affecting, affecting both uh, upstreams and uh, downstreams uh, operations. So with all that in mind, how do we get the house aligned? How do you get everyone on board to realize, hey, this is, this is going to work, there's ROI here, and it makes sense from both an innovative and efficient point of view? Yeah, it starts with a vision. Uh, definitely that helps uh, a lot. So having a clear uh, leader that knows exactly where they want to go. Uh, we've been working with a client recently um, uh, in the States where the start of the project was quite difficult. Uh, they had assigned uh, sort of a few engineers to work on a process with our team, uh, but we really needed uh, the, the, the project sponsor to uh, get on board and explain exactly what his vision was for uh, for the project. So really having one person or a few people that that know exactly what they want or are willing to explore and and work with our team to uh, to change the business processes and 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 maybe uh, align everybody to um, uh, towards that uh, that vision. So it's cross departmental uh, for sure. So you have IT uh, logistics, uh, you have the operations working, uh, and then you have all the people that need the data. So uh, fleet management. Uh, you have the executives, uh, the site managers who want their, uh, their data. They want to know if they have enough traders to ship the next day, uh, if they're receiving everything on time, every, uh, all the, the loads on time, uh, what, the, uh, what the pay utilization performance is. Uh, so it's critical to uh, meet those people and have those conversations to explain what the benefits are uh, in implementing a new a new software and not just yard management right it's all softwares it's not you're not just implementing a software for the sake of it you're implementing it to change your business and allow it to uh, to be more efficient in order for it to change people know how to have to know how to use it right there has to be a team in place there has to be some training there has to be deployment when we talk about the context of something like this how does that work yes great training is critical um, well, first of all, our methodology is, uh, as I said, we map the business processes. Uh, so that first exercise in trying to understand uh, what are each uh, states and transitions uh, for a specific process is, is critical and really starts the conversation. What we do, what we've found works best is once we have those business processes configured, we do an initial uh, configuration with the client. So we always try to involve one or two um, uh, leading uh, business users that are that will be involved throughout the project. We call them uh, our super users, and they most of the time they're really super users. They're they're incredible. They they have to understand business processes, and then they have to understand how the system is configured, and uh, and they have to own, to own it as well. Once those guys are aligned, um, it, it, it gets much uh, easier in the sense that they, they can easily have uh, those conversations and meetings with uh, specific stakeholders so they can meet the gatehouse, let's say managers and explain, show them the software, show them how it will work, uh, readjust the, 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 the fields that they have on the layouts, uh, uh, really allow them to own essentially the future business process for their, uh, their uh, part of the, uh, the operations. 
And then the training is essential. Uh, the training is, is definitely the most important part of uh, any implementation, not just yard management. Uh, it's sitting down with end users or champion users of each department and answering questions, even, even involving uh, uh, the software vendor in answering those questions and, and attending those meetings. Uh, that's a critical path. So we've changed our methodology a few years ago to uh, increase our presence on site. So we, uh, we travel uh, between one and two weeks, uh, a, few, uh, a few months before the go live to really help our clients answer those questions and show the software and validate um, uh, that uh, the champion users have learned uh, the system and they're comfortable with it. And if they, they need to have any adjustments, uh, uh, then we, we help them uh, help them with that. Same thing with the the goal live, right? So we have we have a plan in mind. We've configured the software. We've designed it, configured it. Uh, we've trained the users, and then then once you're live, you have to. Uh, everyone has to start using it in real time. So what we do to ease off this transition is we travel on site uh, for a week, uh, and that really reassures the project team. Uh, so we have uh, two, three, four business uh, specialists that are. Uh, helping them answer questions, fix quick issues, uh, and and uh, and support key uh, key areas uh, to ensure that the, the deployment is as uh, as smooth as uh, possible. All right. Well, Greg, I'm not going to even consider this if there's not some return on investment. I'm a businessman over here. What's the seen and the unseen value of me automating my docs? What what do I gain? What am I missing out on by not doing this? Well, I, well, I mean, there's 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 some massive benefits out there, and and the way we look at it, there's really, um, you know, there's there's tangible benefits, which I, I'm going to you know, summarize for you, as well as intangibles. Now, if you look at the tangible benefits, where we're going to really drive or lower costs, um, we're talking about yard assets, and what I mean by or operational assets, and and what I mean by that is like, say, if a a, a customer owns their own. Um, trailer fleet, we're going to get a much better utilization of those trailers. And that usually translate in, translates into about a 10% improvement um, of your of your trailers. So, and, and we'll 10 to 15%. And we get that feedback from customers by saying, hey, you know what, we usually have about a 10, we, you know, we increase our fleet 10% every year. Guess what, this year we didn't we didn't need to buy any extra trailers or we didn't, our short short term rentals have come down. So that's a big cost area. Uh, an another cost area is areas like the the gatehouse we can streamline that we've we've put a lot of emphasis re recently and saying hey we can totally eliminate that that gate you know we automate that whole gate process so that's all there's also big benefits there but the, the area where we get the biggest tangible benefits out of the system is with the yard driver uh, efficiencies now you know we've we've mentioned the terms we call you know whether it's a yard dog shunter jockey these are the guys that all they do all day long is move trailers and um, that's where we really bring down the cost. Because if you look at uh, managing a yard, um, you know, if you look at all the bundled costs, whether it's the, the equipment costs, the labor costs, each one of these trucks with uh, two guys per, you know, a guy per shift, two shifts in a day, it's running you over a, around a quarter of a million dollars to run one of these trucks. So um, we, can, we can provide between a 20 and 30% improvement in productivity of those yard drivers. So if you've got four or five trucks, I mean, you do the math, um, there's a massive uh, increase in investment there. So those are some of the big tangibles, that's not all of them, but those are some of the, the, the bigger ones. Some of the intangibles is are to the, to the point, and I mentioned that to, to reduce the, the gatehouse aspect of things, um, we've also recently put a big push in, in maintaining communication between all the parties. So, and what I mean by that is third-party drivers are on site. How are we going to, you know, how are we going to communicate to them that, hey, this is your door. Well, now you can come and get your paper, you know, paperwork at, at whatever. You know, we've put a, a big emphasis in trying to keep track of all this. And, and that's our help our customers keep track of this. That's, that's a big benefit. Some of the other areas are um, just in terms of overall throughput of it. But we know that when you don't have a dock crew who's waiting for trailers, or, or you know, you've emptied a trailer and you're waiting for the driver to pull it out. Operation, um, if you don't have, you know, people idling and, and wait, but, you know, those are some of the some of the things that are um, that are uh, that we see and, and that we expect that hey, if you're going to pay for a system like this, this is these are some of the, the key areas. 
Now, I, I've heard a couple terms here. What is the difference between a yard module versus a yard management system? Well, I like to also, you know, look at this as more of a, a best of breed um, mm -hmm. approach as opposed to all in one. So, and we see this a lot of times. I mean, somebody's just invested in, again, a major you know, warehouse management system or TMS type system. And, um, and now they're saying, hey, well, we got a yard module with that. Let's just turn it on. And, and to Fred's point uh, earlier, it's like, it's unfortunately not that easy. You can't just turn on a yard system. Um, you, you know, you need, you know, all the things that we've already mentioned, you need to have senior buy-in, you know, senior management has to be on board. You need to, there, there's all kinds of, you have to map out all the processes. It's not just a question of saying, yeah, we have this thing and, you know, we got, it, it came with our warehouse system, just turn it on. And that's also, you know, to Fred's earlier point, is there was that guy in the room saying, yeah, we already tried that. It's never going to work because somebody just said, yeah, turn the, turn it on and it's going to, you know, we'll have a yard system. Not that easy. I mean, it, it's just a warehouse. Yards and warehouses are similar, but they're not the same. That's for sure. I mean, trailers are not pallets. So it's it's not, not quite that easy, unfortunately. Interesting. Hey, Neil, from the customer experience perspective, what is the unseen value of this? I think there's there's a there's a number of different layers uh, doing it to this. I mean, it depends which way you're looking. Uh, it's kind of from the perspective of the business, it's it's all good news. I think there's a lot of stress, anxiety that that's put on the yard teams. You know, 24/7 operations, often 365, huge peaks uh, at certain times of the year, Black Friday, Christmas, <laughs> Easter, you name it. So you know, these teams are under an immense around amount of pressure. And to echo what Greg said about a module. The idea that you could just switch on a yard management uh, uh, module and it would just run your operations is really reducing the impact and the expertise of, of, of the teams running a manual system. You know, these people have to be sharp and have to be knowledgeable and have to be uh, dynamic because you know there are so many different elements that are you know ever changing. It's a it's a it's a you know moving parts are happening all the time and you know just having one snapshot of what's going on is almost impossible in a manual system. So that stress and anxiety placed on that team, I've seen it firsthand, it is not good. You know, some people can do a career's worth of it, and very few and far between, but a lot of people do a few years in this and they, you know, they can't take it. It's like, you see it, I know it's a, you know, maybe some people would disagree with this, but air traffic control, you know, there's not, okay, maybe there's things flying in the air. It's, it's, it's maybe a little bit dangerous than yard operations granted, but it's no different in terms of the execution, the, you know, every second counts, uh, every slot is vital. You know, that's what our yard uh, clients are facing when they have a module system, when they, you know, when they have a, uh, a manual system, is there, there's so much reliance on these people to make snap decisions that are always close to 99.9%, .9%, okay? Which we know as a human is, is nigh on impossible, especially when you don't have a full idea of exactly what's going on. You don't have the right data. You can't see the, you know, most yards are huge, even in a control tower with a good set of binoculars. You wouldn't be able to see anything's going on. You certainly don't know what's in those trailers when the doors shut, right? You don't know what the contents are of these vehicles. So it takes away that element of anxiety because it puts in a system that for 99% of the things going on, they're being automated. They're, the system is generating and the people are accepting you know, the, whether it's the yard driver, where it's the person inside the warehouse, they're seeing what's going on on their tablet. They have a move or, or an execution task to take uh, to, to do, and they select it and they move on. And the guys unload or load the vehicles. They cross dock. They move pallets, and you know, it's it, it flows. And everybody does the job that they're supposed to do, and they're not fighting fires. So that's one layer, that kind of anxiety and pressure. But then, when you step back, um, you know, it's it's like Greg said, if you have this huge suite of software. And, and you, you're still doing maybe the, one of the trickier parts yard in a manual sense or with a, you know, a less than best of breed system, then you've got to ask yourself, is this really where I want to go? So from a vision, a company strategy perspective, it's just total sense. It makes total sense to where you're trying to go. And with good integration, and Mark is obviously far more of an expert on this than I am, but allowing the data to flow in and out of your ERP system, your WMS, your TMS, really make sure that 
you know, that data is absolutely spot on. Okay, you can be sure of it, it's bona fide, and you have visibility of it in your, whichever, you know, uh, and we have really great reporting tools within our system. You know, you can get a really good in, insight, at, you know, whether it's of a snapshot of an hour, whether it's a whole shift, whether it's site by site, whether it's a month or a year's worth of data, you know exactly what we're doing uh, and, and how we're doing it. So giving your company the visibility of the vision uh, and, and allowing yourself to really know how how you're doing is one one element and just like greg said look in the times we are today where uh the economy is far from certain there's a lot of people being made redundant there's a lot of businesses uh, going to the wall unfortunately you want to make sure that you can compete against your client uh, your, your competitors right and much of our clientele are coming to us saying look you know, we need a system because we know everybody else has one and we need to compete at that level. I need to bring my unit cost down. So from a sort of cost perspective, a longevity perspective, a competitiveness perspective, you know, these digital transformation projects are the only way to go. But you want to put faith in somebody who does it in the best of breed way because you know that every dollar you spend, you're going to get it back, you know, twofold, threefold, even within the first year. So you know, there's a few different layers of it doing it, but you know whichever way you look it's the right thing to do if you want to uh you know get get into the you know the cutting edge and, and and stay with the times great answer neil and i see greg over there he's he's trying to raise his hand greg yeah, did you have a point I, to I, add to this uh definitely i mean i think it's um it, it's good to again put things into context um i i'll never forget we we did a, a, a huge implementation with a with a major uh, north american grocer and just before the go live, the, the senior executive in charge of the project had his, his pep talk with the, with the team. And it, he said, guys, you know, I, I'm fully confident we're going to gain all the efficiencies we want out of this system. That's good. But the, the, we can't forget the end goal here is that when we do, if we don't do a good job, there's not going to be groceries on the shelf. And that's the, that's the ultimate goal here. We have, I mean, we're doing all, you know, we're, we want to make drivers more efficient. We want to do this and that. At the end of the day, we need to get trailers out. We need to make sure there's always product on the shelf. And and if that doesn't happen, you know, that, that that's, you know, in, in the terms of this business, that's catastrophic, right? So that is ultimately the goal. That's ultimately the, you know, the real return on investment is that, that just can't be interrupted. And, and I know Neil also is, in his past life, he had the, 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 the unfortunate, before he had a yard management system, he had the unfortunate uh, uh, kind of experience of occasionally telling his boss, "Hey, we we've kind of we lost track of a a trailer that had ex extremely sensitive promotional product on it, and our customers weren't able to meet their promotion." So those are the kind of things you just never want to have to tell your boss, um, and and that's obviously where when you have a robust yard management system in place, you're going to get that you know, those you know, that return on investment and also that that reliability to make sure that, hey, yeah, we're always going to be meeting our service levels. We have a couple audience questions here. Let's see what uh, let's see what the group has to say. The first one is it's a tough time economically and my finance department are pushing back on investment. Why should my business invest now in an uncertain period? Who wants to take it? Well, I can start. Well, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Greg. You go. Well, I, I I would just say that again, from our experience, a yard is the kind of last frontier. So um, I would say that is the area where you're going to have the lowest hanging fruit, um, just because uh, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, we 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 know that everyone, almost every one of our customers have state of the art ERP, state of the art TMS, WMS. You know, pen and paper when it comes to the yard. Clearly, that's where you want to you want to attack those areas where um, you're going to gain a massive efficiency by redu you know going from pen and paper to complete automation. Big gain there. So that that's what I would start with. And Neil, even, Neil did you have something to add? You were yeah, going to start this one. I, I think that's a great point, and I, and I really think that some of the uh, anxiety or the maybe the the pushback is that. You know, it, it, this this represents a huge change in our uh, sort of operational behavior or change management processes, and and I think we'll, you know where C3 differs from a lot of people out there in the in the market for for YMS and doc scheduling, is that we have you know we've got a very long and successful track record of working 
with supplier, uh, sorry, with, with clients as individuals, right? We're not gonna go there and try to give you something off the shelf because we know better. No, we understand you have a very unique, you know, even two, uh, comp, comp, you know, two competitors in the same market in the same region. We know that their processes may be very, very different. So, you know, I think that some of the anxiety is, is, is that the money that they spend is not gonna return and it's not gonna return quick enough. And I think like Greg says, there are so many opportunities on that yard that we know that we can tap into it's kind of you know i flipped the question on, on on its head when i talked to some of our you know an interested person that comes to us uh, looking for a yard management system is like you know for every month you delay or for every year you don't put this system in your budget for for you know for the upcoming fiscal year you're wasting money you can't see it now but it's happening those fires you're fighting cost you money they cost you personnel they cost you, uh, you know, your your customers uh, get, you know, uh, a bad feeling from not having stock, from not having uh, good KPIs from, from, from the way you're supplying them, or it could be your own business supplying stores. But for every day you delay, you're costing yourself money. So, you know, look at the big benefits, the shunter productivity, the yard driver productivity, the, you know, the, the, the tracking and, and visibility of, of your end-to-end -end supply chain, uh, you know, and just knowing what's going on at your operation in a, in a, in a kind of a blink of an eye and having that data to really manage how to improve it you know th those are things that really will give you uh, a great uh, benefit to your bottom line and we are in the business of not only giving you great software but implementing it and configuring it in a way that's completely unique and effective for your business you know even if you have sites that are different we're going to make sure we don't miss a heartbeat with those processes to ensure that you can automate as much as, as possible and get that ROI ASAP. Mark, let me rephrase that question slightly for you. What if the pushback is we're just not a techie company? You know, we don't we don't really do tech around here. We're scared of tech. Yeah, really. I mean, that that the, the transforming into the digital world is not really optional anymore. It, it, to remain competitive in in, in today's world, uh, you have to embrace the the technology. If you're the the one company that resists it, um, you're going to fall behind all your competition. I mean, everybody's just going to you know, lap you and, and you're going to be left to, in their dust. So I don't, I don't see how that, that should even be a consideration saying that you don't want technology uh, in the house or anything like that. Um, you're just going to be driven out of business uh, over time. I mean, it's, it's where the, you can't really stop that progress and companies are adopting it and they're going to end up moving ahead of you. So our audience has already moved. Our, our audience has already moved ahead. They're way in the future. They said, "Where does self-driving trucks fit into yard management?" Are you guys thinking that far ahead? Who's got this question? Yeah, I, I can. I can kick that one off a bit. Um, definitely, self-driving trucks is in the future of uh, of yard management. I mean, whether it's the the actual over-the-road drivers or, or the shunter units themselves inside the yard. These are coming. I mean, they're already being manufactured. They're not necessarily uh, in full-fledged operation uh, and yet, but uh, in the coming years they will be. And we, as a company, are definitely prepared for these uh, for that shift. So both from the uh, in-yard operation, so being able to task these uh, uh, send send these standardized tasks to these uh, vehicles to have them move. Uh, trailers from one spot to another, or uh, even receiving them through our, our automated gates, like Greg was mentioning, being able to automate or, or, or render the gate fully uh, uh, without anybody uh, actually being physically there to, to support it. That's going to be a big enabler for us to uh, to support these, these self-driving trucks. And really, it's 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 a bit of a no-brainer once the technology is going to be, uh, you know, all the issues are, are sort of ironed out and, and tweaked out. It's going to be a bit of a no-brainer to move on with these things. You're going to get, you know, round-the-clock operation. You're going to get predictable behavior. The, the, these self-driving trucks are going to always take the best path, let's say, within your yard to uh, to optimize the uh, the actual movements. You're going to, you know, you're going to save on labor for not actually having drivers. Fuel efficiency is going to be up. You're going to get, you know, better uh, information or, or better predictive uh, capabilities since. You know, right now, a lot of these these movements within the yard are dependent on on humans, and you know, some some drive faster, some, some cut corners, some you know the shortcuts around the yard, some drive in the wrong way in a one way system. So you, you're going to end up standardizing your operations a lot more and being able to predict better uh, uh, and and make better analysis of okay, how should we optimize the movements within the yard? 
in order to, to maximize the efficiency, maximize the throughput of our building and whatnot. Anybody have anything to add to that or anything else before we turn this back to our uh, moderator today or our host, I guess that would be. Well, I'll just add on, on the self-driving trucks thing. I think the, the yard's the perfect starting point for that because, I mean, it is, it is as Mark said, it's kind of a closed environment. Um, we know what we have to do. In fact, we always say that, you know what, the driver, because drivers, they, they're always a little bit edgy saying, hey, I know what to, I know better than the system, and they soon realize they don't. So at the end of the day, the driver's there just to make sure that, you know, he does what we tell him to do. So um, not that we don't, you know, we love drivers and everything, but um, in this case, there are certain applications within certain yards where if you just had a robot doing that or, you know, self-driving truck, that that should work, you know, quite fine. So, yeah, we think um, – and we we welcome the opportunity to just to implement you know once it gets there yeah. uh, to to use self driving trucks for sure. This has been an amazing panel, Neil, Mark, Fred, Greg. Thank you so much for helping me demystify yard and dock management today. We had some great audience questions as well. Brian, thank you so much for introducing us. Take us home. <laughs> thank you, Duner. Uh, really great. And really enjoyed the discussion, guys. Uh, appreciate the time that you guys spent uh, giving that to us. Uh, so many companies don't pay enough attention to the efficiency in the yard. So it was great to get a better understanding from you guys who are experts on this on how you can achieve that. As Juna said, we want to wrap this up now. Uh, we're out of time, unfortunately. So I do want to thank all our panelists, Greg, Mark, Neil, and Fred, as well as our moderator, uh, Tim Duner from the What the Truck podcast. And a special thank you to our sponsor for today's event, C3 Solutions. And also a very special thank you to all of you out there that took time out of your day to listen to us. It was a pleasure to have you with us. For Supply Chain Management Review, I am Brian Strait. Thank you for listening. <laughs>